Everybody, J.B. Buno here with you live on WFLA Now. We are awaiting a Sheriff Grady Judd press conference here in Pasco, or excuse me, Polk County for a gamer that made allegedly violent and disturbing threats. Here's Good Grady Judd. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being with us today. I'm going to lay out for you why it's so important when you see something or hear something, you say something. Let's start with this. I want so many people to die by my hand and then play with their guts while they're still alive. That's just one of the quotes. Or how about this? I want to strangle so many people to death right now. Nobody understands me, but they will understand how dead they will be in a minute. I'm going to kill so many people. At this point, I've given up. There's nothing left for me but anger, depression, and suicide. I feel like if I ever took over the world, every person that treated me like crap, I would take them and make them suffer and make them have a slow death, and I would enjoy every single minute of it. Right now, I got nothing that makes me happier right now but death or to make those people suffer. That's all I got right now. That's what Nathaniel Burkett was putting on a gaming site. Fortunately for us, the game moderator and other gamers who tried to talk to him on this gaming site call Crime Stoppers and or the moderator actually called the Raleigh Police in North Carolina and said, hey, we see some really freaky stuff. There's a lot more than I just read to you. That was a few of the highlights. So from the Raleigh police, they received information through their tip that maybe this was Winter Haven, Florida. It went to the Winter Haven Police Department who turned it over to us. We had very limited information and a false name. We worked with six different social media networks and our gaming sites. Some of them cooperated a lot, some of them cooperated a little, some of them didn't cooperate at all. I want to call out Steam and their parent company Valve. Finally, after a great deal of work by our real-time crime center, we were able to work our way through the six network sites and figure out that Steam and the parent company Valve were who we needed to get the information from. After hours and hours and hours of work, they said, we need a subpoena. It was four days, four days until they responded to us. Despite us sending the subpoena and saying, we've got someone who's talking about mass murder it took them four days. So here's what I'd like to ask Steam and Valve. If he'd have been threatening to come into your business and shoot up everybody, would it have taken you four days to have provided that data to your local law enforcement agency so we could identify him? That's part of the problem we have. We have a social media world and in that world is a lot of good people that are using that social media to work, to communicate, to do good things, to have fun. People violating the law in the social media world. We also have criminals that are threatening to kill people in the social media world. And yet you want to shut us out, law enforcement, from being able to go online or gather data from sensitive spots with court orders in order to communicate. Fortunately, after four days, we got additional information, which led us to believe Nat Nathaniel Burkett was not in North Carolina. He was not in Winter Haven, but in fact, he was in Sparta, Illinois. So we started working with the Sparta, Illinois law enforcement. They said, oh, we know him. We've taken him for a mental health evaluation. Along the way, we also determined that a church 
in Illinois had said, hey, don't come back to our church because of his outrageous comments. Think about that. But did the church call anyone? When the church saw something or heard something, did they say something? No, they didn't. They simply put him out of the church. Isn't it fortunate for all the members of the church that he didn't shoot the church up, that he didn't come back and shoot the church up, that he didn't shoot up somebody else that he could have prevented? So after tracking Nathaniel Burkett through Illinois, we finally found his dad who said, look, he's with his mother, who's my ex-wife, and they're down in Florida on vacation someplace. So now we arrive back at Winter Haven after tracking him all around the United States. And we found him. And he confessed that he, in fact, was the one that did all the threats. I want to underscore that his mother, Sharon, was totally cooperative, was totally remorseful. She said, I've had him in mental health counseling in Illinois, and maybe this is God's way of getting him help. This guy here was not an active shooter, but this guy here was checking all the blocks in an effort to move toward being an active shooter. This person here is the one that all of you would have been standing at our doorstep saying, when they're saying this stuff, why don't you take them serious? When they said this stuff, why didn't you do something before they started shooting? Well, I can tell you our great detectives and our intelli intelligence analysts in our real-time crime center, our 24-7 crime center that we just recently opened, did something before he escalated to actually shooting. Oh, he told the detectives once he was called, I didn't mean it. I was just angry. I don't have any friends. People reject me. They make fun of me. He was bullied. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here today because this guy was checking all the blocks. I'm here today because many of the social media companies, which make millions and millions and millions and more millions of dollars, didn't cooperate or just cooperated enough to say that they checked the box. The one, despite us saying, we fear that we may have a mass murder any day. Valve and Steam took four days to get us this information. Here's a word to the social media companies. When we come with these urgent requests, we're not doing it for an exercise. We're not doing it as a sporting event. We're trying to intervene in advance and save people's lives. Now, would he have ever, or will he ever, manifest into an active shooter? We have no way to know that. But we do know this, he's now on the radar screen. We now have the opportunity to get him help, to track him, to watch him. He is just a few days away from his 18th birthday. So the issue that we're wrestling with today, and we've got the state attorneys involved, does he need to be waived to adult court and treated as an adult with his second degree felony? Or can we get him better services in the juvenile system? Our goal is to solve this problem. But I wanna start by thanking the gamers, the moderator, who said, whoa, this is dangerous. He's dangerous. His communication is dangerous. I want to thank them for saying something. I want to thank the Raleigh police for not setting on it. They moved this information to Winter Haven. 
our colleagues at the Winter Haven Police Department said this needs to go to the real-time crime center. Most police agencies in this country don't have the staff, they don't have the technical expertise to do what our team did here. We depend on the experts at these tech companies to help. Nobody went out of their way to help. Nobody went out of their way to say, we need to be game on and find this guy. They all hid behind the cloak of lawyers and smoke and mirrors and did just exactly what they had to, acknowledge nothing, give us a subpoena, and we'll get to it when we can. The community did what they were supposed to. They immediately called. The local police department started moving this thing around the country in an effort to identify this person. But we literally took no IP address and a wrong name and figured out who this guy was. But ladies and gentlemen, why do I ask you to come here today? Why do we do this on Facebook Live? This is the new normal. This is the new world. And words matter. When people threaten and write and say they're going to shoot and kill, we must take them at face value. Now, we hope that we can get this young man's life straightened out. But you know what? Today he can't do a mass murder because he's locked up. He wasn't locked up for four days after we could have had him locked up. And thank God that he's talking. And we don't know when the talking ends and the shooting begins. And that's why words matter and we have to take everyone serious. Are there any questions? You said four days. How long does it usually take? It was, it was literally, by the, when we got the subpoena to them, was immediate. It's keystroke. So they could have given us that data that quick. But it just got stuck in the line with everything else. Despite us communicating and finally getting a live person to talk to and saying this is for real, four days. Sheriff, the app that uh, the conversation was taking place over Discord is, I think, one probably a lot of parents aren't familiar with. Um, I assume there are a lot of those apps out there parents aren't familiar with. What, is there a safety message for you know, parents out there? Sure, there is a safety message. First off, you should never let your children on any app if you're not monitoring it. If your kids want to play games, let them play games offline. But these games, not only can they game online, but they can text and type online and they can communicate verbally depending on the game. These kids get very angry. They say lots of ugly, ugly stuff to each other sometimes. But this was a protracted period of time and we only pull the highlights out. Thank God that the moderator on Discord who tried to work with him and other gamers told him, hey, what you're doing is wrong. It's way over the line. And the moderator went forward and did, didn't stop until she got someone's attention. But it was a challenge to get any attention from the social media people. They've got to join us. They've got to quit fighting against us and understand that we're glad to get subpoenas or search warrants or whatever government document you want from the courts to give us this information. But when we're saving people's lives or trying to save people's lives, we need help in minutes, not days and weeks. And what we experience is a response that typically takes days or weeks. Now, some of the sites, and that's why I haven't mentioned all six of them, 
they were as cooperative as they could be as quickly as they could be. Because we didn't know where it was, and all this data was moving around. AT&T was wonderful. It was moving through their site. Google was wonderful, but they didn't have the information. When we got to Steam, that's when we knew and could, and could have gotten the information a lot quicker. Am I hot about this? You bet I am. But here's a word to the wise for these social media folks. If you don't cooperate on your own, we get legislation and force cooperation. But for the sake of humanity, why wouldn't you want to help when someone's out here threatening mass murder? Why wouldn't you want to help right now? And here's my statement to those social media companies, if they were threatening mass murder in your home, in your business, in your house of worship, in your children's school, how long would it take you then to help? I bet it wouldn't take four days. Heck, I bet it wouldn't take four minutes if you could do it in anything less than that. I, I appreciate you asking that question. The reality, he would be part of the revolving door had he hooked up with most police agencies in this nation because most of them don't have the talent, the resources to deal with this. The social media companies weren't pushing. Why aren't you guys finding this guy? Why don't they have algorithms when people start talking about shooting and death and murder and mass murder that they go, whoa, wait a minute. That's like screaming fire in a crowded theater, only worse. But the community did what was right. They saw something. They heard something. They got the message. This person scared them. I can tell you the police in North Carolina did what was right. The police in Winter Haven did what was right. And our deputies could have easily, and our analysts could have easily thrown their hands up with all the roadblocks that kept coming to us and said, well, heck, we just can't find this person. But you know what? Our analysts, our detectives in the real-time crime center investigated this case like this guy was coming to shoot up their children's school. And that's why we found out who he was. Now, you say, well, he's got mental health issues. Well, duh. Of course he does. Normal people don't do this. We're going to do everything we can to help him. But he's got to be held accountable. And the criminal justice system is the only system that can force him to get help against his will. It's the system that can force his parents to ensure he gets help against their will if he'd been younger. But that's, this is the new normal we're in. This is the prime example that I'll share with you that had, because I'm on that Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Commission, had someone taken an interest in that Nicholas Cruz early on in all of those different times it was brought to their attention that we're taking with Nathaniel Burkett, maybe MSD never would have occurred. Now, I can't speak for the future. But I can tell you this, we're putting everyone on notice, the prosecutors in line, the public defender, DJJ, we're going to put the judges on notice 
This guy's threatening. It's not far from this to this. He's threatening. Let's don't let him turn out to be a Nicholas Cruz or one of the other mass murderers. We've got to identify these people. This system worked today like it was supposed to, despite the social media people having no sense of urgency. So he was here vacationing? He was here with his mother, and they were spending some time with a friend of his mother. His mother was totally cooperative. I would even say she's relieved. We told her there was going to be a press conference, and she said, it's going to be embarrassing, but if it saves his life or makes a difference and saves somebody else's life, it's worth it. Did she have any idea what was going on? She had him in counseling in Illinois for the same thing. But he's back behind this again. I mean, he's 17. He's not six. He's a man. But his mother was so cooperative and so concerned, and she understood. She said, look, I, if I'm embarrassed, if our family is embarrassed, that's okay if he's helped or we stop another person from victimizing or shooting someone up. His, his mother gets it. He apparently gave some indication that he was in the Winter Haven area in some of his communications. But he was using fictitious identifiers, and we didn't have the IP address. So we, couldn't, we, had, we went all around the country and through six different social network sites before we figured out who he was. The work by this... 24-7 RTCC team of ours was unbelievable, unbelievable. When did the investigation start? I believe we started about the 17th of October. Any other questions? So was he using a computer in Winter Haven? Today? Yes, so. yes. He was still in Winter Haven when you... He was in Winter Haven when we found him. Once again, it's a tough situation for mom and the family, but I appreciate what mom did more than you know. And if there are other moms out there, understand, we got to get these kids fixed before it goes from fantasy to reality. And we have no way of knowing if or when it goes from fantasy to reality. But he was talking the game. Okay? Thank you very much. Have a good day. That was a press conference from Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd there uh, in Polk County at the Polk County Sheriff's Office again for a 17-year-old gamer arrested uh, in Winter Haven accused of making violent and disturbing threats online because he was jealous of other gamers getting praise and validation. You heard Sheriff Grady Judd talk a little bit about how he was extremely frustrated by the amount of time it took for Steam slash Valve, the gaming company, uh, to respond to a subpoena four days time to respond uh, to uh, requests for cooperation, knowing that a teenager on that service was making threats. I'm going to read some of those threats, those alleged threats here. Uh, the, the, the student, excuse me, not the student, the boy allegedly telling his competitors, I'm going to kill so many people. I want so many people to die by hand and then play with their guts while they're still, still alive. I get pretty happy when I imagine myself being a villain going on a mass murdering spree like in a movie. He also made suicidal comments. We're going to have a lot more on this story coming up on News Channel 8 in our evening newscast tonight, your NBC station right here in Tampa Bay, as well as on WFLA.com and in the free WFLA app. We have lost our signal from Polk County, from the Polk County Sheriff's Office. This has been a press conference by Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd here live on WFLA Now. Everybody, thanks for being with us. We have a whole lot more to come here on WFLA Now, uh, including a look at the tropics. In, uh, we have a weather update coming your way about a tropical depression that is forming in the Gulf of Mexico, as well as uh, coming up 
in, I think, closer to 2.30, we have uh, an update on the depressions here in the Tampa Bay area, the depressions that have formed. So a lot more to come here on WFLA Now in the hours ahead. Thanks so much for being with us.